Hello, lovely ladies, and welcome to Zion's Company of Women podcast. I'm Lana. And I'm Courtney. And it's wonderful to have you with us today. Hello, my friend. How are Hello. you? I'm excellent. How are you doing? I am doing good. I'm doing good. good. And I'm, I'm very excited. much. Mm. Yes. Go ahead. I'm just we very have... much looking forward to today. Like we're both so excited. We're trying to talk at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to say. Like I am really excited about what the Lord's going to do in this space today. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're definitely. about to shake it up a bit. Hey, I think so. Yes, it's probably time. It's been a little while since we did something off. I shouldn't say off schedule, but it kind of is a little off mm. schedule. It's more like just following the Lord's schedule and what he's wanting us to do. He's left us in peace for too long. So now it's yeah. time <laughs> to shake things up a little bit. But these That's are cool. always, these episodes are always, um, uh, they're a blessing because, you know, we get to revelate together, like in yeah. real time. Uh, yeah. so people get to kind of hear some of our, um, what we're hearing separately and then what it sounds like to bring those things together. So that's yes. always a treat, I think. Yeah, it's, it's so much fun. And I, I listened back to our podcast from, I don't know what month it was that we did it, but it was for five, seven, eight, four. The mm -hmm. Lord said to me the other day, listen to it while you're cooking dinner. So I did. And like, <laughs> there's a part at the end, my friend that we both just got, rocked by the Holy Whacked. Spirit and I remember you saying <laughs> well ladies you are you are viewing or you're part of a live undoing right now <laughs> so <laughs> it was uh it was very cool I love it when yeah. the Lord moves like that so I do too gonna... and after you told me you listened to that one I went back and listened to it again and I was um I was driving when I was listening to it and I thought I need to pull over and write some of this stuff down because <laughs> I don't remember saying that and I don't remember Lana saying that, but that's like very relevant right now. I know. I need to go back and take notes <laughs> yes. so I can pull more of that into the now. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was definitely one of those, one of those ones that I thought, okay, yeah, it, you know, really pull the meat Courtney from what the Lord has already mm -hmm. said and, and let, let that continue into the present time, um, mm -hmm. really be focusing on that. That's something I feel like he's really been saying a lot lately is to, you know, pay attention and pull yeah. those strings of continuity to what he's yeah. said, um, from, you know, start of the season into the now. So, yeah. 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 So good. I really, I really agree with you about pay attention. I felt that really strongly as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had a, a giggle too because, you know, have you ever listened? I don't go back and listen to my teachings or anything unless the Lord is very strong and like go and listen to them because in my natural mind I go, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Why did I say that? And so I just don't do it. But when the Lord said go back and listen to this one um, and I'm in a season now where the Lord's like go back and listen to those words that you released and pulling those things to now, when I'm sitting in this podcast um, you said something and I was like, that was so good. And then I opened my mouth and said something and I'm like, that was awesome. But that so was not me. Have you ever had those moments where you're like, that was really good, that thing that just came out of my mouth, but that was totally not me. That was so the Lord. Like, I don't even remember saying that. And like, wow, I wish I had a thought of that. That was really good. Yeah. You know? yeah. I know. Straight up plagiarizing Holy Spirit here. Yeah. I'm like, you just... But that happens to me sometimes too. I'll, I'll go back and listen to stuff and I will very clearly know. I mean, I think that's just kind of a gift um, that the Lord gives to, you know, keep you grounded in some of that too. It's just a very clear, that was not me. That did not come from my natural mind yeah. um, in any way, shape or form. That was completely, that was completely, completely him. And, you know, yeah. you get to like, thanks for, you know, thanks for helping me out because without you, it'd be really embarrassing. <laughs> right. So, yep, uh, I agree. I uh, so good. Well, we are going to dive in this morning, ladies. Um, so as we said, we're going to shake this up a little bit um, on the Holy Spirit's leading. Um, I was in the kitchen the other day and I was cooking dinner and the Lord just began to speak to me. Um, and gave me this, this word. And I ended up 
um, texting you, Courtney, right? And I was like, hey, this is what I, I heard. And again, it just feels like um, this call from the Lord of like, hey, I see you and I see what's going on and here's the strategy. So this morning we're going to talk to you around ascending, but what I heard the Lord speak was that there is an attack right now um, on ascending. And I know for myself personally that uh, when the Lord spoke to me about this year being the beginning of a whole new level of ascending and governing in Christ, um, that word was really heavy on me. I was like, wow, we're about to learn um, by the Holy Spirit what it looks like to um, live from our seat in a whole new way and live from our place of authority and faith. Um, and then since then, still carrying that word, still feeling it very strongly, but feeling like on a lot of direction, like a lot of um, from a lot of directions that there's been quite a push against that. So I've been noticing in my own life lately the battle has been feeling more intense of actually um, coming above those things. There's been this feeling of a real pull to try and uh, keep me grounded in the natural or to keep me grounded in things that I see with my eyes or things that I'm picking up, things that I'm feeling. And in that moment when I was cooking dinner, I was chopping my carrots, I was like, God, like I know this is not this is not where I'm meant to live, like what is happening? And that's when the Lord said, hey, there is, um, there's an attack right now on ascending because if you actually think about it, if we all really truly learn to live from our seat and, and to live from our position in Christ, my goodness, like the power, the fruit, the move of his spirit. And so when the Lord speaks a word like ascending, it makes sense to me that the enemy's like, hey, I'm going to come along and try and keep you on the ground as much as possible. So that's kind of where we're going to like launch from, I guess, if I can call it that today. Um, when I asked the Lord for a scripture, he spoke to me out of Matthew 11. And I want to read it to you just before we go into our conversation, because I want you to keep this verse as a kind of framework for today or like a, yeah, like a theme of really what the Lord spoke when I, I heard these words. So Matthew 11 verse 12 out of the ESV says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. And in the um, Passion Translation, this is like, I love this, uh, Matthew 11, verse 12. It says, from the moment John stepped onto the scene until now, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth and passionate people have taken hold of its power. And so when I asked the Lord, um, okay, Lord, you're highlighting an attack, but I know that the Lord isn't just like, hey, here's a heads up, you're under attack, hope you survive. He's the God who gives the strategy, right, of how to um, overcome. And when I said to him, Lord, what's the strategy? He said to me, you need to apprehend. This is like, yes, there's a an attack on ascension to try and keep you um, contained into seeing through the natural realm, um, feeling heavy, feeling like you're living under a whole heap of stuff. But actually, as you apprehend uh, my promise, my rhema word, the things that I'm speaking, as you apprehend those things um, and rehearse that rhema, you will rise above. And so that's kind of where we're going to launch from today. We don't have notes here of what we're going to do. We're just going to see where the Holy Spirit flows. Um, but I know that Courtney and I uh, really feel like that the Lord is on this and may this episode really bring clarity to you and freedom to you and encouragement, um, deliverance, if you're finding yourself in that place where you're feeling like there's an attack on you ascending and living from your yeah. seat. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love I love this verse in general because it's one of those ones where I, I have felt lately over the last couple of weeks, Lana, I felt like the Lord has been, you know, grabbing shoulders and squaring shoulders. And it's like, stand up, steady yourself. You know, it's that it's that talk that you would give a soldier, you know, someone yeah. that's about, about to, you know, really that needs to be strengthened or is about to go into something that is, 
you're going to need to have your feet planted. Um, so I love this passage in general. And I wanted to uh, look down at the footnotes really quick in the Passion Translation because it says here, uh, the kingdom of heaven, or another way this is translated is the kingdom of heaven is entered into by force and violent ones take violent ones take hold of it. This is one of the most difficult passages in Matthew to translate from the Greek. When the Greek words are translated into Hebrew, it becomes a clear reference to Micah 2, 12 through 13 and includes the breaking forth or parets. That's the word parets. So I pulled it up really fast here in the ESV, the Micah 2, 12 and 13. I'll read it to you really quickly. It says, I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. I will gather the remnant of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold, like a flock in its pasture, a noisy multitude of men. He who opens the breach goes up before them. They break through and pass the gate going out by it. Their king passes on before them, the Lord at their head. So there's yeah. very much a picture there of the Lord saying, I'm setting you. Um, I'm going to assemble you. Um, I'm going to set you together. And then he's opening up the way. He's the one that's leading forth the Lord at the head. He's breaking open and he's leading forward, which that's him. That's what he does all the time. Um, but in reading these two verses, Lana, you made what he said to me the other day make sense. Um, it was kind of random. I was in my quiet time and you know, the veggie tales, <laughs> Dave and the giant, was it? Um, no, it's Joshua and Josh and the big wall. It's the one where it's um, Joshua and Jericho. Um, mm -hmm. I kept seeing that scene from Veggie Tales where Joshua's standing there and there's an angel in front of him. And he says, Joshua says, who are, are, you, are you for us or are you for them? And he said, neither. But as the commander of the armies of the Lord, I have now come. And yes. I kept seeing that like play over and over in my head. So I went and I was like, let's just go read it. Um, and it's in Joshua six and it's where, you know, Joshua's near Jericho. Um, he sees standing in front of him, a man holding a drawn sword and Joshua approached this man and said, are you on our side or on our enemy's side? Neither. He, the man replied, I have not come to take sides, but to take charge. Yes. And then Joshua throws himself on the ground and begins to worship and says, I'll do whatever you command my Lord. And then it says, the commander of Yahweh's army said to Joshua, remove your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. And Joshua obeyed. Now, what's what stood out to me in this passage, Lana, and it talks about it in the footnotes in the Passion Translation, was that the reason why it was holy ground was not because the angel was standing there. It was because it was Jesus. Mm. So it's a pre-incarnate version of Jesus coming in. He's saying, I'm, I'm here, not come to take take sides. I've come to take charge. So there's very much for me when I'm, I'm reading, I'm hearing you say all of this, um, talking about that apprehension, hearing Jesus say like, I've come to take charge. There's very much felt a call lately to lordship, to the lordship yeah. of Jesus, uh, where I felt that question, is he Lord over this? Is he Lord over this area? Am I, am I going to listen when he asks me to do something that my flesh mm. doesn't like or that feels mm. opposite to what I want to do in that moment? Am I going to step mm. outside of where he's put me or will I stay in my, in my place where he said, hey, Courtney, don't do that. Or I want you to stop this or I want you to focus on that or go here. Am I going to stay in that covering or am I going to step outside of it? So I say all of that to say, I think that that for me has also been part of that apprehension, Lana, of putting off the things that feel heavy. Yeah. Because that feeling can feel very real um, mm. and choosing to say, I'm not going to, I can acknowledge my feelings, but they're not always, they're not, how, how did I explain this to my kids the other day? They are good messengers and they can teach us things and we can learn things and ask questions, but they are really bad bosses and they're not meant ah, to be good. in charge. <laughs> yes. So I was like, it's, it's the word, it's the Lord, it's my spirit that gets to be in charge. And that's a, mm, that's a rub sometimes. <laughs> 
But that's that's yeah. what's on my mind. When I hear you say that and I hear you talking about apprehending and, and that ascension, that coming higher, that's where I feel that initial battle, at least for me and mm. maybe for some people, is. It's in, especially yeah. for feelers, we feel things. That's kind of how we discern sometimes. Yeah. They send a message, but they're not meant to be in charge. Yeah, that's really good, my friend. That's and amazing. it does. And oh, there's so much I want to say. Um, and so many different directions I want to go all at once. But I will say, firstly, like as I'm listening to you, I'm hearing that sound of um, the encounter that you and I had separately um, a month or so ago when you were in the car and I was, again, yes. chopping veggies. And it was like on like Donkey Kong, right? And there was this yes. moment where you in your car correct me if I say this wrong, but you said something like soul, sit down, spirit, sit down. get up. Is it something like that? Sit down. Yeah. Yeah. I said and the same soul, sit down, thing. spirit, stand up. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and that, like, I'm hearing that as well in what you're saying, like, there is this, um, there's a, there's an intentionality in like apprehending. If you think about the word apprehend, like let's look it up in the dictionary quickly. But to apprehend yeah. like isn't something that I, I think of and go, oh, like um, I'll just sit here and it will be apprehended for me. It's an, There's an intentionality that comes with apprehending. So looking at the dictionary here, um, it says, sorry, my little phone is uh, having a bit of... Um, bit of trouble. Okay, um, so the definition of oh, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can look it up. My my phone is not loading fully, but the first point that I'm seeing here from the Collins Dictionary says um, to grasp something or to understand, which is really interesting. To apprehend, to grasp something or to understand. And then underneath, um, another one says to arrest or take hold of. And so those words are like very strong to me. Like they're very violent. If I can use the, the word that we just read in Matthew 11, like there's a, there's a fierceness about apprehension when mm -hmm. I think about it. Like if I'm going to apprehend something, it's it's very strong. That word communicates strength to me. Um, and so just even with you sharing that, um, I heard that that sound of that encounter again mm -hmm. of that intentionality of like, listen, like I'm, I'm taking authority here, like I'm standing, I'm I'm commanding. This is this is how it's going to be. Um, did you see anything on your dictionary? Did you happen to see anything different? That's okay. I did. I just, yeah. I no. I saw. Um, it says to seize either physically or mentally. So to mm -hmm. apprehend a thief is is to nab him. Mm. But to apprehend a confusing news story or to apprehend a difficult concept in physics is to understand it. That is to grasp it mentally. So mm -hmm. it's very much that still taking hold of and I thought that that thief thing was interesting that it wow. mentions like to nab a thief is to apprehend it's to mm. yeah that's, that's really, understand I, perceive yeah all right so all my prophetic juices are flowing really strongly right now as you read <laughs> that <laughs> because as like as I yeah. hear that I go okay lord so you say the strategy of any sort of attack to ascend in this hour is to, I love what you said about the lordship. Are you lord over this? Are you lord over this? So that being my place of like foundation of the lordship of Christ. And then from that place, I apprehend the enemy, right? Like I, I can nab that thief. I can, through my authority, mm -hmm. I can I can cease like the works of the enemy. But also I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can see this two layer. Like the Lord is so amazing the way he speaks because in one word I can see the apprehending of the enemy and stopping the enemy. And in the other, the, uh, the flip side, I can see the apprehending and the understanding. Like the like what you said about um, about 
like uh, uh, what was it understanding and oh my phone is frozen um to grasp mm -hmm. that's it to and seize. I'm like oh my that yeah. to see yes and so I'm like, oh, my goodness, because if I think of apprehending in my life and I think of like actually standing in a place of authority, the more that I grasp and understand who Christ is and, and the revelation of who he is and his authority that has been given to me, who I am in Christ and the power of the word, the more I am understanding that, then the more I'm able to stand strong in my authority and to nab the enemy and to you know and to take hold of what is mine what the Lord is speaking while at the same time keeping the enemy back you know and shutting down the plans of all the attack of the enemy and so just in that one word I um oh, I can just feel this invitation from the Lord into this place of revelation into this place of greater discerning what the Lord is saying, but also discerning what is happening around me, what is the enemy doing, not looking behind every tree for the enemy, but not being ignorant of his schemes. And I think, my friend, um, something that really hit me when the Lord spoke this was the Lord said to me, it's not, no it's not natural. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, looking around at your circumstances to go where like what is happening right now why am I feeling like this he's like don't look around at your circumstances to try to make sense of what you're feeling like heaviness or pressure or whatever it might be or chaos or swirling he's like lift up your eyes and ask me what is happening and from that place then the Lord's like actually this is an attack I am definitely one who is very careful. I don't want to over-spiritualize anything and I never want to give the enemy like any credit and I don't want to, again, see a demon behind every tree. But I think that sometimes when you've been in this place where it's been so swirly and there's been so much, um, you know, opposition that you've been feeling or battle, um, that it's very easy to then begin to look at the natural. Okay, what's wrong with me? Or like, what's what's wrong with my life? Or and they're not like, there's a place for Lord come and examine everything. But I think we need to. The default place needs to be Lord. What is happening right now? Show me from your perspective what I'm actually mm -hmm. dealing with. Because at the end of the day, if the Lord is saying, "Hey, apprehend." And um, this is an attack on ascension. It's all about victory. It's all about the Lord leading us as the body of Christ into a place where we're living victorious as overcomers and we're actually learning even a new level of ascended warfare. Like what does this next level of ascended warfare look like? Um, but it's all so that we can be an army that is strong and walking on the offense rather than continually feeling like we're living under or on the defense, which is not our inheritance. It's not who, right. who we are or what we're called to do. Right. Um, so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that that's, um, you know, something that I feel like the Lord's been saying for a while now, just to me personally and in general, is that, you know, you don't play by Satan's rules. You don't play by the kingdom of darkness. You don't even play by the, the rules of, of, of the natural. So when we've been brought into the kingdom of light, just like you're a citizen of the country that you belong to. And so if you go to another country and you go into the embassy there, you still have the rights as a citizen of your country wherever you go. Um, does that I hope I'm explaining yeah. that clearly. So because yeah. we are um, a citizen of heaven, we are part of the kingdom of light. There are things that um, apply to us now that didn't apply to us before and don't apply to us now that maybe did before. Um, yeah. So there's very much this, this call right now to wake up to what is him and what is not. And I think that this is where we've seen kind of the body of, this is my opinion. This is where I think we've seen the body of Christ get into some areas that have actually made us in some ways weak in mm -hmm. these areas that you're talking about, Lana, of power, moving in power, moving in the Holy Spirit, because we've been taught things and we've ingested and we've believed things about the Lord 
or about mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit or about our permission that is not true. And it's mm-hmm. handicapped us and it's kept us in a place of accepting things that the enemy has handed out and assigning them to the, to the Lord and they're not him. And yep. so it's like, now's the time where it's like, you have to know what kingdom you're of. You have mm-hmm. to know what is true of the Lord and what is not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not man's teaching anymore. This is the word. You, you know him and you know the word and the truth of him or we get into trouble when that happens. Like we we lose out on something. We're missing something. The enemy's trying to hide something or keeping us down low, like you said, instead of instead of ascending. Um, and so it's very clear, very important right now that I think that we have clear biblical teaching, clear teaching on who the Lord is. What what mm. is in the atonement of of Christ? Like what did His cross do? You remember how you said that it's not about. Um, what, what was the word in times? Is it, did you say in times eschatology, but it's about Christology right now. This is about Jesus. This is about the cross. This is about, yes, that's the study. That's the focus. Um, and I just, I feel that ringing so much in my spirit as you're talking, because I'm like, Mm -hmm. this is it. Like it's time Mm -hmm. to know what kingdom you're of. Um, I told you this week I was watching a movie. It was really funny. I laid down to rest and, um, this little, thing popped up on the TV and it was, um, there's a movie called the boys in the boat. So Mm -hmm. it's about the 1936, uh, U S rowing crew. Um, and there, they were taken as a JV team, a junior varsity team at a college. And they went, they started winning all of these races. And anyway, they went to compete for the United States, um, in the Olympics that were in Germany. And there is a, man that sits at the front of the boat that calls the pace. So he calls it out and then the front rower matches it. And then everyone behind him matches the pace of their rowing. Um, And there's a scene at the very end of the movie where they uh, fell way behind at the at the, the gold medal race, they were way behind. And this is a true story. So please go back and watch the movie. It's fantastic. Mm. But um, they're far behind. They need to move as one. They have to row as one. They have to, you know, not be off one off from another. They need to be as one, but the man that's calling out their pace, there's, there were four phrases that he just kept saying on repeat. And every time he would say it, it was like, it would just hit me deeper and deeper. So I'm just laying in bed at like 10 30 at night, just weeping, watching this, this last race. And the first thing that he said was legs through because you row largely with your legs And when he said that, the Lord said, keep moving, you keep moving legs through, you take your, your your legs, your strength, you know, you carry through. And then he said, eyes up. And immediately I was like, oh, eyes on Jesus. Like that's where we (laughs) fix our eyes up. (laughs) The next thing he said was stay low. Yeah. I was like, of course, Lord, that place of low, you know, that humility of not pushing mm-hmm. herself up above any, anyone or anything else. And then the last thing that he said was as one, as mm-hmm. one, as one, just over and over and over again. And I know that he was talking about within the body. And I think that that's really important. I think that that's part of what the Lord desires and wants for us to be as a body. But I also, mm-hmm. th- when I also saw that, I also felt father, son, Holy spirit and us yes. were as one we're as one with him legs through Mm -hmm. eyes up, stay low as one. Um, so -hmm. that's just like, and the whole next day, the last couple of days, that's all I've been hearing rolling around in my spirit is as one, as one, as one. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the time that we're in Lana, just to wrap up all that stuff that I just threw at you there, you know, to grasp, to understand, to know what kingdom you're of, to me, there's so much of that where the Lord's like, it's it's like a pulling in. Can you feel that? It's like a pulling yeah. in and a strengthening of all these things together. Um, mm. That man, yeah, there's a lot that I think he's going to be pulling back and making very clear for us. Yeah, I love that. I love that um, that you shared that because when you sent me the little video where you recorded to show me the little um that scene I was like oh my gosh like I could feel the Lord like as as I'm watching this and like you know again it blows my mind the God of strategy like he is one that is just you know he will speak through a movie to go hey 
here's mm. some keys like you know <laughs> stay low eyes yeah. up legs that was all up. I needed it's like don't make it complicated Lord like two word phrases you know <laughs> that yeah. you can call out yeah. to yourself stay low like duck. Yeah. <laughs> right but like think of those points like those things that were said like that is so they are keys for now like they are keys for um what the lord is saying like hello he's been speaking so much about stay low like oh my gosh the phrase the door is in the floor like there is just that that phrase is just like on me like it's go lower go lower go lower that's like surrender it's yielding it's it's this place of resting in him it's it's just beautiful this depth that he's calling us to and um and don't stop like i love that because or keep moving you said because when i think we're in this place of um we can feel like there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of swirling there's battle there's opposition like when it gets on like Donkey Kong, I don't know if there's anyone else out there like this, but the temptation to go, okay, I am so done with this. Like I just don't <laughs> want to keep moving. I don't want to keep pushing. Like I'm tired. Like, oh, I just want to like sit. And I, believe me, I've had my moments of sitting under the tree like Elijah. Like I am done. I've had those moments in my life, right? And then the Lord comes and he ministers to me and he strengthens me again. And then we're okay. We'll, we'll go again. But I think it's interesting that you highlighted that because if you think of ascension, when I think of ascension, I think of going up, right? And I think of movement. I think of this place of like ascending doesn't speak to me of just being stationary. It speaks to me of movement and, and going up. And so I think part of, um, you know, what the enemy's trying to do now on a, a number of um, fronts is to really hinder movement. And that yeah. hindering of movement, I think, is individual. He wants to stop you from um, moving into what God has for you, especially in this hour where there's a new level of pioneering that God is, is opening up, where a lot of people are um, coming into context. They're feeling like they're coming into their, their context in this hour where they've been told like you're wrong or what you carry is wrong or your expression is wrong or I don't like your voice, like whatever it might be that right now God is breaking all that stuff off people and raising up his people without apology, right? And and to move forward in who they were created to be, their giftings and their creativity and all of those things, and to pioneer in new ways with him. And I think it's really interesting that you've got that happening. You've got the Lord calling for, hey, I'm going to teach you what it looks like to live from your seat. You're not trying to scramble up to your seat. You actually live from that place. And in all of this, I can see that the the enemy um, is trying to hinder that movement. He's trying to hinder that momentum. And, oh, my goodness me, I just saw something. So mm -hmm. uh, the Lord gave me a word. Um, I haven't got it in front of me, but I, I, off the top of my head, I'm going to assume it was last year, Um or maybe the year before, but the Lord said to me in this encounter, I saw um, heavily, heavily pregnant um, women like all across the body of Christ and the Lord said, get ready to birth a movement. And it wasn't just like, oh, I'm birthing like um, something small. It was like what I've placed within you, you're going to understand in this hour is actually it's a movement. Like you're going to see mm -hmm. my spirit birth through you um, and it's going to be a movement that's going to spread through your your home your city wherever it is that the Lord has called you to to build and to birth and so part of this I think when you shared that was I felt yes like there's a hindering or well, the, the enemy's trying to hinder movement of moving forward but also I think there's something my friend really significant um, on this birthing time that we're in right now and that um, the enemy's trying really hard to stop the the birthing and the coming forth of what the Lord has placed within his people and this whole conversation I feel like is all about teaching us to um, know what it looks like 
to live in a place where we are not feeling like we're constantly living in this place of battle. Like we're, Mm -hmm. yes, we're in war season, but in Christ I am an overcomer and, yes, it's relentless and, yes, it's been full on, um, but I can feel the the overcoming, my friend, that's being birthed. Mm -hmm. I can feel the maturity that's being birthed. I can feel the as one you know, as a as a bride, as a like, I can feel the Lord is um, He's moving deeply and on so many fronts mm-hmm. to bring us to this place of we are a victorious bride. We are not a weak bride that's sitting in a corner and desperately like, when's Jesus going to come back and save me? <laughs> like, it's not that. And I think we're there is a heavy refiner's fire that we've talked about a lot, but there's also mm. a heavy opposition. But in it all, in the refiner's fire and in the heavy opposition, God is he's, he's refining his people so that we can be that victorious bride. And part yeah. of that is actually going, okay, Lord, in my own life, what does it look like for me to live like from that ascended place? What's yeah. your strategy for me to apprehend right. in my personal life? Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, so much to say. I'm just trying to figure out what, like you did earlier, what direction to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I had coffee with a friend the other day and we were talking about all kinds of stuff, just what's been going on lately and I kept hearing myself say this one phrase over and over, which was draw a line. Like it's like a drawing a line in the sand. Mm -hmm. And it's very much felt like that type of season and that type of time right now where it's a, um, no, I won't be tolerating that. Mm -hmm. No, I won't be allowing that to kind of linger on anymore or to just accept some things. Mm -hmm. It's felt as though, you, we could either come to the point over the last four years where we say this doesn't work mm-hmm. or we say, no, it does. And it's that line drawn in the sand moment. And it's actually no, no, the prayers have been hitting. No, mm-hmm. you know, things in the spirit, like you were saying, things in the spirit have been shifting and I'm not going to move from the spot where the Lord has put me or from what I know he has said to be true in his word. So it's very much felt like a lot of people have kind of been coming to these points um, Mm -hmm. over and over again, where it's like the grind and the wearing down has been, you know, the enemy's tried to wear, wear people down to get them to just say, Mm -hmm. to give up. And it can be a quiet giving up. It doesn't have to be an, I'm announcing I'm giving up. It can just be a laying down. And, and I'm not saying that there's not times for rest along the way. Pioneers, do you need rest at certain mm-hmm. points in time? But um, again, I went back to that movie because in the clip of that movie, The Boys in the Boat, they kept playing little clips of that Tom Petty song, I Won't Back Down. I Won't mm-hmm. Back Down. It just kept saying it over and over again. And while sometimes we take that on for ourselves, if we are, you know, we're saying I won't back down, the Lord always, I feel like he's always saying that (laughs) that's who he is. He's not going to back down. He can't, it's not, that would be asking him to be something or someone that he's not. Mm. Um, So it's just really just to echo kind of what you were saying, that, that fortitude, that strengthening, that part of just saying, no, this is it. This is where Mm. I stand. Like you said, the victorious bride, Mm. this is what he has said. And this is where I'm not going to move. I won't give an inch to mm-hmm. anything other than what you've said, Lord. Um, yeah. So that's that's been coming up a lot for me and then in people that I've known lately as well. Yeah, I, I really resonate so strongly with that. And I think there's two things that I, I just heard while you were speaking, my friend. And the first thing was um, we have to be very intentional about where we sow right now because everything that like our thoughts, our words, like we are sowing, mm-hmm. bottom line, we are sowing. And what we sow, we're going to reap. And I really feel like there's a weight of the Lord even heavier in this hour around don't be careless in your sowing. Don't just grab seeds and throw them out there. 
like through your words or through what goes on in your mind. And look, I understand like when you're tired and you're battle weary, it's so easy to go, I'm done. I've had it, blah, blah, blah. Like it's just, I I know, but there is something about um, the Lord highlighting in this hour intentionality, like again reminding us like your words have power what you speak you're creating with your words what you're thinking what you're meditating on like that's what's going to be magnified in front of you and it's hard when it it, there's a lot of like you feel like there is um things coming at you in every direction like I've had moments where um you know, the enemies come really strong. And it's not just like one thought in my head. It's like this like bombardment of like, bang, 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 bang. yeah, like full on where I'm like, oh my gosh. And before, like a long time ago, I used to get really bogged down by that. I would go, I don't know what to do. Like I deal with one and then, oh my gosh. And then the Lord said, no, just praise me. Just don't like, just like almost with a fierceness of like, I'm not giving you any airspace any breath that I have in my lungs right now and the gift of time that I've been given and the gift of my choice right now is not going to be given to you. It's going to be given to the one who is worthy and deserves all praise. And so in that place of going, no, I'm not going to tolerate this, like I am drawing that line in the sand, enough with this, this is my posture. And I think in this hour posture that word is heavier on me than it ever has been. It is so important how we posture ourselves every day like especially in those swirling moments and when you spoke before my friend I heard something and then I went back to this encounter that I had and I'm like oh my goodness I had this encounter a number of probably 2020 off the top of my head I haven't got my journal here but I saw um, so much attack coming against and interesting it was against daughters of God and it was all about their voice And the enemy had come to try and muzzle and steal their voice. And the Lord said to me in this encounter, um, it's all about the voice, my voice coming through them, my roar being released, them stepping into my authority. And then the Lord said, but, and I'm like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. And he said, look. And I turned and I looked and he thundered. Um, They have dropped their swords. And then he said, you have dropped your sword, pick up your sword again. And he was thundering. And my friend, I can't tell you the amount of times in the last two months, little things in my life that the Lord has said to me, you've actually laid down your sword right now. And I'm like, what? And he's like, pick it back up, pick it back up. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So again, there's this fierceness that I feel like God is inviting us into of no toleration that says I'm not even going to tolerate the, like a little bit like I am I am going to be ferocious in my faith I'm going to be ferocious in my posture I'm going to be ferocious using the word but not in my own strength Lord empower me by your spirit by your breath to be taking that stand and to be apprehending um, the enemy to 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 stop him, but also to apprehend what you're speaking and to stand in that place of victory and to mm-hmm. not lay down my spirit. And I think for many, um, many, I think because of numerous things, have dropped their swords. They've laid them mm-hmm. down because they're tired or whatever it might be. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like the Lord's like, no, now is the time. You need to pick up your mm-hmm. sword again and you need to remember who you are. Because this is who you are. You forgot. Let me remind you. This is who you are. You're kind of freaking me out a little bit because on the 28th, I came up to my office and um, months before that, uh, when we had the tornado damage, I had taken down. I have a sword that my husband bought me that's Mm -hmm. super personal and... um, It does have to do with Lord of the Rings, so I'll just let my nerd flag fly there for a little bit. But it has some inscriptions on there, and I didn't always – I didn't know what it meant because it's, like, in a different language. And so I was like, all right. But um, months before this, the Lord had told me, he said, Courtney, it's time to take your sword back up to your office. And I knew, like, the minute that he said that, it wasn't just my physical office. It was the the place where you're meant to sit and occupy. And so I Mm -hmm. said, okay, and I brought it up. And, um, the other day I came in to have some time with him and and immediately when I sat down, I had this vision and I could see 
my sword out and it was on the floor and I was sitting in front of it and he was there. And I thought, well, that's interesting. I haven't seen anything like that for a while. So I thought, well, my lightning quick brain said, well, why don't you go ahead and do that? And I was like, all right. So I went over and I grabbed it, put it on the floor. And I was like, I'm just going to have quiet time on the floor today, I guess. So, um, I sat down with it in front of me and I noticed the inscription and the Lord said, why don't you look that up? I said, all right. So I went and I looked it up and it actually reads a noble defense for a noble or Royal woman. Oh. And so you're saying that about daughters and laying down the swords and that's immediately oh. like what's coming to my mind. Um, so just to say yes, <laughs> But he spoke to me in and through all of that. And he said, Courtney, you know, your sword, the sword of the spirit, like that's, that's him. That's mm -hmm. his word. Mm -hmm. um, and our righteousness, that's of him alone. Mm -hmm. These things all come. This is all his. They all mm -hmm. come from him. Um, and it's from him and to him and through him alone. That's it. It's Christ mm -hmm. alone. Um, but there was a real significance in that encounter for me in that, just like you said, it's time to pick some of those things back up. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't have to be through our own striving. It doesn't have to be through our own strength because it's not through our own strength that we have the authority. It's through him. Right. It's the fact that he right. lives, he lives inside of us. Like that's the spirit that's coming out. It's not you. It's him. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a lot of that lately that uh, he's been very much highlighting and making making very clear, very clear for me that it's not me. This is not me speaking. This is not my authority. This is the authority that Christ has given to me. It's his authority that I've now been given because he's in here. Um, so all of that to say, friend, thank you for thank you for sharing that because that encouraged me <laughs> very much. Because <laughs> it's been a while since we've talked about that one in particular. But yeah, mm -hmm. there's there's really something on that right now. And I think I think part of it too, Lon, and I I hope what people hear through this whole podcast is is that call, just like we said at the beginning, that pay attention. Pay yeah. attention because I think so much of the like trying to keep us from ascending is to keep us fo focused on the things that are going on down here and mm -hmm. not, you know, the eyes up, eyes up, yep. um, word that the Lord is calling. It's look up here, look at me. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I think as well, part of that, um, strategy of the enemy to mm -hmm. keep, us looking down and looking at okay my own life and I'm looking at all of these things like the the hour that we're in God is not only calling us to govern in our own life to govern in our own in a world to govern in our homes there is a world out there that needs the body of Christ to arise and to live from her seat and begin to govern like nations need the body of Christ to arise and to govern more than ever before and like I, oh, I'm going to cry. I feel mm -hmm. like the enemy is trying so hard to um, keep people contained and distracted in their own, like the stuff that's going on in my own, my inner world, where the Lord is like, hey, not only am I teaching you to live um, in victory in your own life and in your home and in your family, but also I'm raising up a church that is going to govern in the nations. Like you're gonna, mm -hmm. you're gonna stand with me in my authority, um, and you're going to, you're gonna pray and you're gonna intercede and you're gonna move with me mm -hmm. to see my kingdom established in the nations. And I know, you know, it is like it's on right now. Like it's on in in our lives. It's on in the nations. And God, I can see it. He is not only raising up His people to learn how to govern and live from their seat in their own kind of sphere of jurisdiction in their kind of families and their homes but but in the world in the nations and for as gross darkness covers the earth that we would arise and shine and that his glory would be released and the enemy's terrified of that he's terrified of of a victorious bride arising in this hour and beginning to govern 
with the Lord in the nations in a way that we've never seen before. And so I think a lot of the attack, yes, it's on ascending, but it's also on authority. It's on if the enemy can convince you out of your authority, then you become inactive. Like you live as a victim. <laughs> Don't live yeah. as a victor, right? You're living mm -hmm. under and you're a victim. But God is awakening us in this hour by saying, hey, pick up your sword. Hey, remember who you are. Like daughter of noble character, of royalty. Like this is who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think of that Lion King. You know, in the Lion King, is it like Mufasa yes. that goes, remember? Like, you know, there's <laughs> <Yes>. this. <laughs> and it's 11 11 here, ladies. So, hello. Ah. But. Yeah, I just, I really feel like um, there is a real call to, um, yeah, to just continue to ask the Lord, would you awaken me in my authority and um, awaken me more to who you are, that it is your authority, that you are Lord, you are King. Um, and I want to say this, this is the final thing that I will say. I was uh, listening to a podcast the other day um, from a church that I used to go to in South Australia, beautiful place, and they were doing a um, they're doing a series on the armor of God, which is really amazing because the Lord told me to study the armor of God right now for the war season that we're in. And when I saw it, I'm like, awesome! So I'm out exercising, and I have it in my ears. And uh, I think it was Rachel. Um, Weatherly that was preaching and she said um, that in Ephesians 6 where it says to stand, right, that word, if you look at it, is also the word that is um, can be translated to abide. And it just blew my mind because it made me, it made me realise that in all of the, the um, you know, the, the standing and like even in Ephesians 6, like the, the armor of God, they're not just random pieces that we just throw on ourselves. They're part of who he is. And so in that, that place of I'm going to stand, when you've done all stand, the only reason I can stand is because I abide in him and because I have, I'm in that place of intimacy with him and then I stand. Um, and she also went on to say that in um, Isaiah, I think it is, where it says that he will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I can't remember the word that she said that garment was translated as, but she said it's used only once, that word garment in Scripture. And it's the garments that the priests would wear when they would go to minister unto the Lord. And she's like, it's the garment that was given to them, like by the Lord, to go mm -hmm. and minister unto him she's like so as they went in intentionality to minister to the lord then the garment of praise was lifted off them that that's sorry the the spirit of heaviness was lifted off them so and crazy. again i just go wow like how many times in my life had i declared declared that verse and gone thank you lord you've given me the the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness but there's actually a call to intentionality and to engage in that place that as i minister unto him then that spirit of heaviness is lifted off me in the Holy of Holies, in that that secret, deep, intimate place as I minister to his heart, then that heaviness is lifted off me. So anyway, right. I just had to share that. Because I thought, for that. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. hundred anyway. percent. And I, um, yeah, maybe that's another thing for another podcast because I, I feel like the Lord has just been really highlighting authority and, that we're not always very aware of exactly how much authority we have. And so we don't, we don't step out. We don't pray. We don't speak um, mm -hmm. because we think we just assume, Oh, that's too much. Um, yeah. And actually there's much more that we have. Um, so I think that this is maybe opening the door for us for <laughs> another conversation mm -hmm. later. Cause I feel like, I feel like there's more here. I feel like we've only scratched the surface on yeah. this topic for sure. Um, there, yeah, it's very okay. ripe. Very, yeah. very ripe. So good. Oh, so good. Well, we've loved sitting with you here with you, lovely ladies, again. It's always a beautiful and favorite space of ours. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. We really hope that this has um, blessed you and encouraged you and strengthened you. And if you're finding yourself in that battle place where you're feeling like there is such an attack on, 
on that ascension that the Lord is um, inviting you into in this hour. Like just know that we're praying for you and that um, we just encourage you to really apprehend um, what the Lord is saying. May you go forth and, and ask the Lord, God, what does it look like for me to apprehend um, in this hour? Because you're going higher, daughter of God, awakened further into what it looks like to live from your seat and, uh, and to encounter him and see Jesus in a whole new way, a whole deeper way. So we just bless you and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye. Hello, lovely ladies. It's Courtney from Zion's Company of Women podcast. And I want to thank you for all of your incredible support. If you've been blessed by the podcast and you'd like to see more content like this, please consider donating to support the Zion's Company of Women ministry team. Your donations make what we do here on the podcast a possibility. Just click the link in the podcast description for a variety of ways to donate or you can donate via our webpage at zionscompanyofwomen.com. And while you're there, check out our upcoming events, as well as our brand new launch of Scribes of Zion and Zion's Company of Mothers. Thank you for all of your incredible support, and as always, God bless you.